Toby and I met in the fall of 1962. He moved his laboratory from Columbia then, and at the same time, I entered Rockefeller as a graduate student. I had been interested in ecology and in genetics as an undergraduate, so it was natural for me to visit him in his laboratory of population genetics and evolution. I quickly was drawn into the laboratory and was very happy to do my graduate work there with Dobie. Dobie had real charisma, an unusual ability to draw people to him and to his laboratory. Somehow he made all of us who worked with him feel that what we were doing was the most important thing in the world. It's a sense I wish I could inspire in my own students. Dobie taught me to learn new techniques and new concepts by simply assigning me to do things I hadn't thought about before. When I had been a student just a short while, he asked me to learn to use the computer that had just been put into the neurophysiology lab at Rockefeller. Then he wanted me to use the computer to analyze selection on chromosomal inversions in experimental populations. I didn't know anything about computers, and I didn't know anything about selection analysis, but I began to learn to use the computer from the Rockefeller people, and Dobie steered me to Howard Levine at Columbia to learn how to do the selection analysis. I went to meet Howard Levine, and he very kindly introduced me to selection analysis and set me on the right path. Dobie and I collected for two summers in the early 60s in the Southwest. One summer we were based in the American Museum's wonderful station in the Chiricahua Mountains, and another summer we were at Mather uh, outside of Yosemite. We would collect in the area and then take Dobie's car on longer trips to collect Drosophila pseudo-obscura. We brought it back, set up cultures, and prepared salivaries in the field. Dobie was a great naturalist loved to identify plants and animals and taught me to identify quite a few of them. He was a skilled horseback rider. I remember he told me that he had been taught to ride by the Cossacks in preparation for several long expeditions he took on horseback to study the yaks and other domestic animals of the nomadic tribesmen in the outer regions of Russia at that time. We rented horses during the two summers that we collected during the early 60s and rode fairly often. I can remember riding through the desert with Dobie, talking, and then going back and collecting Drosophila. Dobie was at his best in the field away from the city. He enjoyed being outdoors and having a, a chance to think and relax. Hollister said, well, you know, uh, I will introduce you to Dubashansky, but I won't do it until you have read his book, Genetics and the Origin of Species. And he gave me a copy of it, and I took it home to John Jay Hall, where I live. And uh, I think maybe two or three evenings I had read the book. It was, it was marvelous. I mean, up until that time, I hadn't seen any logic to evolution at all. And you would see that you could put together the, uh, the phylogenies of inversions and make calculations and, and do things which, which I understood and which did not just involve uh, uh, Greek terminology. I thought it was tremendous. And so uh, after uh, two or three evenings of, of reading, I'd finished it. I went back to Pollister and said, yes, I finished it. And he uh, then introduced me to Dubshansky, which was uh, a shock to me because I expected uh, some large person with a beard and with a shirt that would button at the side of his neck, like the, the students, the Russian students that I had gone to high school with. But that wasn't the way he was at all. But at any rate, and uh, that's how I finally met Dubshansky. We had set, started an experiment, and uh, the results had come through uh, uh, for the, the first evening of uh, collection. And then uh, Dubshansky, with his uh, little calculator, which was a, a brass uh, contraption of some sort, looked like a ruler and a stylus, and he simply spun disks, and it was like an odometer. Uh, that made calculations for him, a very crude instrument. 
Uh, the second day, he said, uh, made his calculations, and he turned to me. I was just sitting there doing nothing. And uh, he said, uh, uh, Bruce, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the mean distance that the flies flew in the first uh, day was, uh, and let's say, uh, 70 meters. What do you think they did today? And uh, I thought for a second, and I said, oh, I suppose about 98, 100. And he stared at me, and he said, how did you know that? And uh, I said, well, I don't know, but I figured that the area that they covered was probably doubled, not, not the mean distance. And so I simply took the square root of 2 is 1.4 and multiplied it by, by 70, which happened to be approximately correct. Now, it's more complicated than that. And uh, you read the uh, papers by Wright uh, Sewell, Wright and Dubshansky, and you see it's much more complicated. There are all kinds of, of temperature effects and Oh, Lord knows what. But at any rate, uh, he was amazed that I would come up and, and uh, say uh, something which was practically on the nose, and he didn't know how, how I did it. Some field trips I took with uh, Theodosius Dobzhansky, my mentor. Uh, that would have been in the uh, early, in the 50s and 60s. I went with him very rarely because, as the female student, he only took me along on collecting trips out west and elsewhere if my, mu my husband accompanied us. My husband was his dentist and uh, quite agile in the field, uh, especially with nets and broken cars and cooking and stuff like that. In fact, Richie was much better at collecting than I was. He used to say what was... Uh, 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 this was very simple thing, field work, for a dentist who usually did manually more difficult things. I, I'm not sure Dobie enjoyed that statement. Um, uh, much of the work we did was uh, done in Colorado and some in California, and uh, some of the collections I brought back. He never, however, took me to South America uh, to collect with him, although I work on a South American Drosophilid. I always thought that my field work with Dobie, such as it was, I more often than not benefited from the field work as opposed to doing it myself, um, were highlights of my time with Dobie because they were times he would speak to me. And uh, one trip we took when Natasha was first getting ill, she was due to have gone, the four of us gone, and her heart, her angina was acting up, and so we went with him alone with her instructions, and I recall him uh, calling her every evening when we stopped, although paying the fees for these calls most reluctantly, the fees made him miserable, and being away from her, not collecting with her, made him miserable. Um, uh, uh, Dobie gave me my first Drosophila pool of storm when I was still a teenager. He had collected it himself that 59 paper in PNAS uh, I started to work on and uh, I remember him calling me in the morning uh, telling me there were several things I could do with Paula Storm for a thesis and asking me to decide and think them over. One of course was sexual isolation, second was hybrid sterility and then he went home to Claremont Avenue for lunch and uh, asked me to think it over and what I wanted to do. I actually had in mind a, a short sweet thesis with uh, Drosophila in Solaris. Uh, and uh, when he came back from lunch, <laughs> he never asked me for my decision. This would, would have been in 59, late in the year, and he, uh, no, this was in much earlier than that, uh, I say 57. Uh, early in 57, he never asked me for my decision, but he simply gave me the flies I needed to do the hybrid sterility work. I, I never uh, recall ever telling him I had decided upon it. <laughs> 